I would like to do a study today about abortion and the fact that abortion is murder. I never preached on this subject before um, because to me it's just kind of a no-brainer. It's just sort of a, well, yeah, you know, you kill a baby that you're, a woman is with child. That's the correct biblical term, not pregnant. But a woman is with child and she decides that she's going to kill that child for any reason, and I do mean any reason, then she's a murderer and she will be judged by God as such. And I'm going to show you from the scriptures that the vast majority of the atheists out there don't believe in, um, but they will one day. Um, I'm going to show you from the scriptures proof that abortion is murder. All right, we're going to start out in Jeremiah chapter 1, one of the most you know, irrefutable passages on the idea of the baby is just some sort of, you know, it's not really a baby until it comes out of the womb or something else. Just absolutely nonsense. Jeremiah chapter 1, beginning in verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, God speaking to the prophet Jeremiah, in other words, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before he even formed him in the belly. So it's before he was even, the mother was even with child, God knew him. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Now, you know, some of the Bathlicks out there, they'll say, well, you know, um, that just is for Jeremiah. You can't make that for every child. Um, that's foolish. God, the creator of everything, all life, by him all, all things consist, the Bible talks about. It isn't just, oh, Jeremiah. Yeah, I knew him, but the other babies, it just got, whoa, that, oh, there's a baby down there? They created that. The husband and the wife, they're, you know, whatever relationship. They created a baby. I, I didn't know that. You know, God's not speaking to anybody else but Jeremiah in the passage there, but he says to Jeremiah, before I knew thee, I formed, or before I formed thee, I knew thee. Before you came out of the womb, I sanctified thee as a prophet. Well, that's only to Jeremiah. Well, God was only speaking to Jeremiah in that passage, but you can't say that that is only relating to Jeremiah. God, the creator of, of all life, certainly knows everyone before they're formed. He creates life, you see. It's not just some kind of a random sexual act that happens and this and that creates a child and God's up there going, I didn't know that. You know, I, I had no idea. <laughs> People are so messed up. Psalm 13, or I'm sorry, Psalm 139. We'll go there now. There's a lot of scriptures that back up what I'm saying. Psalm 139, verse 7, down to verse 16. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. God knows everything. God is omnipresent. Um, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day, the darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. God knew about David. So it was just a, a thing in Jeremiah, it's just about Jeremiah, that you know that's not true of anybody else or whatever. Well, now it's true of da Jeremiah and David, but you know, nobody else. Come on. God is not that stupid. God knows everyone before he forms them in their mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in count continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. I think that's pretty clear that God knows every baby before he even forms them in the womb. But it's okay to take that little baby in there and kill that baby because it's not convenient for you to raise that child. You filthy, wicked, disgusting, fornicating whores out there. 
Any woman that has an abortion deserves hell. Her damnation is just. She's a murderer of her own baby, her own flesh and blood. That's a disgusting, sick, vile sin. And quite frankly, I, I always say this just sort of, you know, not in jest, but in sort of a sarcastic thing here, I guess. If I was ever put into power, not happening, but if I ever was, abortion would be a capital crime. You want an abortion? Death penalty. First time. Oh, you're going to go out and you're going to have a baby and deliver the baby yourself and kill the baby yourself. What kind of a woman would even do that? Death penalty. Every time. First degree murder is what I would call it. Psalm 127. Hey, globalists, if you really want your, you know, population agenda, you know, and all this stuff, we need to take the population down. Put me in as president and don't, you know, you know let me get away with what I want to do. Uh, don't stop me from doing what I'd like to do. Uh, there'd be blood running in the streets of this country. There's a lot of things that need to be stopped and radically stopped. One, Psalm 127 and verse 3. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. Why? Because He's the one that created the baby. Um, and again, you know, oh, well, see, you can only use the thing about Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 5, and the thing about David in Psalm 139. You can only really use that about those two. It doesn't relate to everybody. Well, what do you do with this verse? Children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Only in certain certain circumstances. That doesn't say that. You know, some of the dumb arguments I've heard. Matthew chapter 18. That's okay, God. Uh, I know that uh, you want to see your little child that you've formed in the womb. You want to see that little child out playing in the out in nature and picking flowers and chasing butterflies and laughing and giggling and having a good time. But uh, I don't want that because that would really inconvenience my life. I have a career to think about. I have this, I have that. So I'm just going to abort the baby. And we'll just, I won't say baby, I'll just say fetus. Um, you know, we'll go back to uh, what Haeckel or whatever else, Ernst Haeckel, I think it was with the embryology thing and ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. I don't memorize much from evolution, but that one is on such a level of stupidity that I just love it. I like to use it occasionally just to remind myself how stupid the educated elite, well, they're not really elites, they're just morons. Um, people of rather low birth that come and they think that they're smart because they can say a bunch of Latinized words and things. Ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. What that means, basically, um, if you want to boil it down to how stupid it really is, it means the development of the embryo, the, the fetus there, it, it uh, mirrors how man evolved. You know, <laughs> stupid. Been proven to be a fraud. He, you know, forged, or not forged, but he, uh, you know, made the drawings and didn't even make them correct to try to make his system work out. You know, the baby somehow starts as a, animal, you know, single-celled amoeba or something, and then it becomes a person or something, and it shows how we evolved. Oh, so, okay, so then that shows that man evolved in nine months? Well, no, 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 it just, you know, kind of shows the miraculous nature of us, how we evolved for millions of years. <laughs> you have to be really stupid to believe things like that, or very wicked, and I choose the latter. Uh, the atheists out there, they're very wicked people. Very wicked. Some of them, you know, well, I have enough sense to stay away from organized religion. Well, duh. You know, <laughs> so does every Bible believer too, you know. Tell us something that we don't already know. But uh, the evolutionists and the atheists and everything else out there, they had to come up with a system so they can justify murdering unborn children, little babies. Somehow they get to live, you know. But uh, the baby, no, no, we have to kill that. We'll just call it a fetus or something like this. Yeah. Matthew chapter 18, verse 1. I'll get there. Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 6. 
At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Um, there's a lot of people that are going to fit that one right there. Um, your damnation is just when you mess around with little children. Uh, this new thing with the perverts out there. Now we have the pedo pride flag or whatever. You know that uh, I'm I'm adult attracted to. Uh, no, you're pervert. You're disgusting, filthy pervert. If you think that you should be allowed to molest children, you're disgusting. All the Catholic priests out there burn in hell. All these pedophiles burn in hell. And anybody that supports them wears and flies this satanic flag, the rainbow flag and whatever else with the little pedophile collars now, you deserve to burn in hell as well. And I pray for the day when your your damnation comes, okay, quite frankly. And I'll have no sympathy at all when their death comes as well. It's disgusting. But, uh, well, you say, well, that's a little child. He talks little child there. It's not talking about abortion. Um, what was the little child before they were out and walking around they were in the womb they're not a little child when they you know they're they're not technically a child until they leave the womb and take their first breath peter ruckman taught that it was a theological thing he wasn't for abortion but you know it's not technically you know man became a living soul when he when he took his first breath so technically oh shut up shut up that's stupid okay um when a woman has a baby inside, it's called with child. All right. Our text there said, Jesus called a little child unto him. It's the same word. Okay. Duh. All right. Mr. PhD, stupid Ruckman. Um, and there were some great things that he taught. This is his poster right here that he draw. He drew and whatever else. I'm not saying the guy's in hell burning or something. I'm not saying that. I have more grace than a lot of the brethren. But the whole point is he was very wrong on that. Little child is used for a child that's out walking around. When a woman has a, you know, she has a baby in there, it's called she is with child. Mary was great with child. So child is used for a little child walking around and for a baby in the womb. Don't tell me that there's no difference. Well, they're not really living. They're not really, con no, it's a life in there. And when a woman destroys that life, she is a murderer and a very special kind of murderer. I don't mean special good. I mean very evil kind of murderer because she's murdering her own flesh and blood. You're a rather sick individual if you do that. Can they get saved? Well, sure. Anybody can get saved. I teach that Jeff Dahmer got saved after he went to prison. So if he could get saved, some wicked, vile, disgusting, satanic abortion mother, she could get saved. And if you're saved out there and you're, you had abortions in your past, well, praise the Lord. I'm glad to have you as a sister in the Lord. But don't you ever try to justify what you did. You're a murderer, former murderer. Say it like that. And you need to say it that way. Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 8 through 9. Be merciful, O Lord, unto thy people Israel, whom thou hast redeemed, and lay not innocent blood unto thy people of Israel's charge, and the blood shall be forgiven them. So shalt thou put away the guilt of innocent blood from among you, when thou shalt do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. Um, how about some innocent blood? How about the blood of little babies? How, can, how much more innocent can you get than that? I remember when my son was born, I actually delivered him. Uh, no hospital, no midwife. It was a free birth that we had at home. I did quite a bit of research and study and things. I've you know, actually talked a lot of other brethren into doing the same. It's a very natural process. Um, having a child is not an emergency procedure that you need to get in the car and drive like crazy to the emergency room and get her in quick and you know get the baby out or something. That's nonsense. It's a natural process. But uh, I remember when my son came out, he came out head first thankfully. Um, and he came out and there are ways that you can do that naturally to get their head down to, you know, there where they come out and 
Again, I've talked about that in our natural free birthing video. You can watch that. But he came out and I got his little head and I, I reached in and I, I got his, his you know, underneath his armpit and I kind of held him and I was holding him and cradling him and pulling him out slowly. And boy, his two arms came out and whoop, out he came. And, uh, you know, all the birthing fluid and everything else there. And, and I looked at him and I said, you know, no, he shouldn't really. This is going to be too hard for us and things. So I just, you know, pulled out my knife and just <clears throat> stabbed him. And okay, yeah, well, you know, he didn't take, he didn't technically take his first breath yet, you know. So I just wanted to get rid of him because he's, yeah, he's. <laughs> of course, I'm being ridiculous there, but uh, wouldn't that be a horrible thing to do? My little dear precious son there, and and he comes out and. And I'm having to hold his little head and things and hold him and, and rubbing him and things. And he started crying and I handed him to my wife and she started nursing him. And isn't, wouldn't he be innocent blood? How could you kill that little guy like that? Dear little precious baby. He has a right to life just like I do and just like my wife does. If I had to plunge my knife into him and, ah, that's not a good, I'd be guilty of innocent blood just like every abortionist is out there. And by the way, you say, well, I've never actually personally had an abortion, but I'm for it. I think it's a woman's right to choose. It's her body. No, it's not her body, okay? It's her flesh and blood. It comes out of her body. The little baby comes out of her body. I don't mean to say it, but I'm saying the little baby comes out, but it's not her body anymore. If you understand what I'm saying there. But uh, when a land is guilty of shedding innocent blood, um, God has a right to destroy that nation because of the innocent blood that's been shed. And the innocent blood that's been shed in this nation, uh, it's crying out to God. And you remember that. You remember as this country falls apart, as this nation, as there's bloodshed and there's war and there's death and there's dying and there's famine and all kinds of stuff that's coming starting very soon, you remember Oh, why would God do this to this country? Oh, why? God, please, why are you doing it? Years of abortion. What God has planned for this nation is going to be absolutely ferocious. Turn back to Psalm 106. And I'm going to enjoy it. I am going to enjoy watching the wicked, vile, heathen of this country get slaughtered. I hope that we have World War II number two. You know, the, all the dead bodies stacked up from the death camps and things. I'd like to see it in this country. You say, really? Yeah, well, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The sick, disgusting people that are in this nation, they deserve exactly what's coming to them. You know? Psalm 106, verse 34 through 42. And, oh, you know, I, I, I'm offended at this preacher. I don't think he's right in what he's saying. He shouldn't be saying these things. You'll remember my words. I'm prophesying the future death and destruction of this country. I'm prophesying it right now. It will happen. So you can go away and get angry and things, leave a nasty comment, hit thumbs down, you know, whatever else. Go ahead. I don't care. Report me. Whatever else. Oh, you're a hate criminal. You know, you, you should... He should be forced to give a public public uh, apology. I will never apologize for what I'm preaching, ever. I want you to understand that. Well, you've highly offended me and things you've you've hurt me and uh, deeply. And I could care less. I really could care less. This is the standard right here. The Holy Bible, more important than all the books of this world. And you see, if you really, if I can get it through your thick skull right now, you'd understand that I'm actually concern for your soul and I'm saying you better flee from the wrath to come because it's coming and you don't believe in God right now uh, you will you will the time will come when you will but it'll be too late for most people when they finally realize that God is real and his judgment is real Psalm 106 verse 34 through 42 they did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works and they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. That's what America's doing. Oh, no, it's, an, it's a Planned Parenthood clinic. 
They wear white lab coats there. Uh, they're devils. They're devils. You're sacrificing your, your child because of mammon. You, I can't afford it or I have you know, a career to think about, whatever. Mammon is one of the devils mentioned in the Bible. Money, love of money is the root of all evil. Um, there's a lot of other devils that Americans serve. And the uh, people out there that proclaim to be Christians, some of them are getting into abortion and being okay with it. Verse 38, And shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a-whoring with their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance. And he gave them into the hand of the heathen, and they that hated them ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them, and they were brought into subjection under their hand. You know, wouldn't it be something if uh, God let China run this country for a little while? Come in here and just slaughter the people? Take them off to death camps? Work them to death like they've done to their own people? Well, China's buying land all around the country. I heard the one time that uh, there are farmers that are being offered, uh, given offers of $26,000 an acre. I don't know if that's true or not. But uh, China wants to come into this land. Maybe God will let them. Just as a way to punish the wicked heathen of this country. Oh, God wouldn't do it. Well, what, a, what nerve to say this. It's happening. Again, are you people so thick-headed that you don't see this? China is buying land in this country. You don't... Um, well, we're... We're America proud. We're America strong. They'll never take us down. Oh, you mean the BRICS uh, nations? The BRICS nations that make up currently 80% of the world's population? Those ones, you mean? Hmm. Yeah, we're going to defeat them with our military. Our military that's filled with sodomites and perverts. You know, oh, you're out there, you know, fornicating and whatever else and, and things. That, military is just a fornication factory is all, all it is, you know. Good night. Um, stories I've heard and things of people I've known, soldiers I've known and whatnot, the, the, the filthy fornication that goes on in America and the UK and most other, you know, the allied nations or whatever you want to call us now, uh, whatever. And they got all this pro-sodomite stuff and everything else. Just sodomy and fornication, just running rampant and God's going to protect this nation and we can rely on these perverts to protect us you know thank you for your service pervert I don't think so and you know anybody that's in the military too you know what I'm talking about you know that there's all these rules of engagement we well, can't do this now and you can't use those kind of weapons and you can't this and you can't that and you have to salute your you know female superiors and whatever that have no idea what they're doing and you know modern military is a joke not going to win any wars, especially against China or Russia or India. Give me a break. Um, all right, we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 6 next. I find this to be highly offensive hate speech or something. <laughs> uh, whatever. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through 19. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Things that the Lord hates. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Hands that shed innocent blood. You know what? If you're a doctor that performs abortion, God hates you. If it doesn't say it, it just says he hates my hands. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, uh, it's referring to the person that's shedding innocent blood. You know, I mean, how's it work? God, oh, God hates just your hands or something. Okay, what's he going to do? Cut them off? You know, and heart that deviseth wicked ima imaginations, like people that want to get abortions, feet that be swift in running to mischief, like people that get abortions, a false witness that speaketh lies. It's just, an, it's just a fetus in there. That's a false witness. You're speaking lies. And he that soweth discord among brethren. So there's a couple that abortionists uh, relate to there. There are a couple different things that describes abortionists perfectly. 
well, could we have a debate? Are there some things that, you know, what if a, a guy rapes a woman and, you know, then she becomes with child or something like that? Okay, then have the baby be raised by the woman. Again, what's the situation? Was the woman partly at fault? Oh, no, never, not ever. Why was she down in that part of the city? Why was this? Why was that? You did, they never want to ask those questions. Either it's just all the, the rapist's fault, which, okay, rape is bad and horrible and things, but, you know, put the rapist to death and keep the baby. <laughs> Duh. You know, why does the baby have to suffer? Just insane. And, you know, it's so funny, too, because, oh, what about an in, you know, rape through incest or something like this? Or what about, uh, they just sit there and they come up with this stuff, and yet the vast majority of abortions are not that at all. It's just some career stupid feminist witch that goes out and fornicates, and then she doesn't want to take responsibility for her actions. And so she goes and she murders her own little baby. Isaiah 59 And, you know, well, how does this, how's this whole abortion thing going on so long and whatever else? Oh, God's allowed it because he's going to judge this nation. And that judgment's going to come and it's going to be ferocious. Um, but again, it just illustrates the, the extreme powerless nature of these church buildings. You know, it's kind of funny because after the, you know, what they call the Johnson Amendment, uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson came out with this whole thing of the 501c3 churches in the uh, 1960s. And abortion comes out in the 1970s, 1974, the Roe v. Wade thing, which, oh, they've overturned it now. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, no, they haven't. It's still up to the states. It's just being used to divide and conquer. That's all the thing is. But uh, it's kind of funny because 501c3 churches come in, abortion comes in, and the 501c3 churches can't stop abortion. Why? Well, they're not allowed to say anything that would affect public policy. They can't tell you who to vote for. They, you know, they're just creatures of the state is all that they are. But I'm a nut because I bring that out. Yeah. Isaiah 59, verses 1 through 8. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Boy, talk about a perfect uh, description of America. Verse 5. They hatch cockatrice's eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. I mean, okay, read verse 8 here yet. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Um, you know, it's a wonderful thing. You want to talk about peace? Holding a newborn baby, your baby, and you look down into that the eyes of your little baby, and they're looking up into your eyes, and the little hand goes up, and you touch the little hand, and you kiss their little hand, and things. Talk about peace. You know, the worst day in the world, and you come home, and you see your little son or your little daughter laugh, and you giggle, and you tickle them, and they, they giggle, and things. Great peace comes from that. But uh, now, nah, you know, you just should be able to kill that baby and whatever. Disgusting, vile perversion is what it is. Luke chapter 1. I think that you should be handling this in a more scholarly manner. There are certain things that don't. They're not worthy even of a nice scholarly soft answer. And I, I happen to disagree. It's murder. It's wickedness. And it needs to stop. He said, we won't stop it. Okay, then get ready for God's wrath to come upon you. Luke chapter 1, verse 39 through 47. 
And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the Oh, wait, it says babe. Um, uh, the fetus? Oh, no. The babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Well, he's not really living. He's not really a living... You know, stupid. It's talking about John the Baptist, you know, in Elizabeth's womb. Verse 45, And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Yes, Mary needed a Savior to all the papists out there. Mary was not sinless. She was not immaculately conceived. She was not assumed into heaven when she died. Okay, that's a lie that the Catholic Church just made up within the last 200 years. All right, um, the Catholic Church taught for centuries that Mary died and was buried. I'll be doing a video on that someday, hopefully, but uh, if I get the time to do it. But my whole point is you have a baby in the womb and the baby hears something and leaps for joy. You say, well, that's just, you know, that, that's just John the Baptist. That's not every child. Uh, well, it's interesting because... My little boy, when he was still in my, the womb of my wife, um, there were different things that we would do, and he would get very excited in the womb. And we always joke with him and things. He loves wild edibles, wild berries, and things that we pick out and when we go out foraging and whatever else. And we were getting them when she was with child. And we actually got to the point one time where we said, um, we said let's go pick some wild berries. And he started moving and things like that and getting all excited. And we thought, no, it couldn't be. Did it another time? What do you think? Should we go f see if we can find some wild strawberries? Getting all excited and things. You play really soothing music and things. Um, hymns, old hymns, instrumental type of stuff. And you get real calm and, you know. They know what's going on in the womb. But they're, it's just a fetus in there. You're disgusting. If you're for abortion, you're disgusting. And like I said, if God allowed me to get in control of this nation, I'd round you up. I'd send you to the death camps, <laughs> quite frankly. You said, oh, really? Yes, I would. Abortion is that vile. You have to stop a sin like that. I would actually want, see, if I was put in power, I wouldn't be like the devils that are in there right now that are actually trying to destroy this country. I would actually say, no, I want to save this country. I want this country to go on to be a great nation again. And so I would have to get rid of certain people in order to turn God's wrath away from this country. And I would do it. If I was allowed to, which, yeah, I don't think so. But let's continue. Galatians chapter 1, verse 13. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Uh-oh, we have another one. Here you have the Apostle Paul, separated from his mother's womb. Hmm. That means when he was born, then he became a living soul, took his first breath, and then God decided. That's not what it's saying. <laughs> he is separated for a special purpose from his mother's womb, the time that he was in his mother's womb. I wonder how many prophets were killed. I wonder how many great men, great scholars and things, and beautiful women that would grow up to do great things for the Lord. I wonder how many were killed over the years by these satanic abortionists. God knows. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 through 8. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. 
And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. That's my future. I'm saved. I'm born again. Um, and me standing a bunch against, against a bunch of wicked people, um, I'm not scared at all of what they could do to me. Well, they'll come and they'll spray paint things on our, our ministry office here. They'll smash our windows or they'll try to attack me or whatever, or they'll make fun of me on mainstream media or they'll take the video down or whatever. I could care less. I'm going to have to stand before God and I'm going to have to say I overcame because I want to inherit all things. Um, I want to be there and not have to be ashamed before my God. You see, this Bible right here is against the sacrificing of innocent blood. And that is exactly what abortion is. Um, abortion is not, you know, America, one of the themes of the last 100 years of this country has been, let's see how much sin we can get away with. And if we can survive, then we say that you're brave and you're pioneering a new way of thinking. No, you're wicked. You're going actually backward. See? America has not evolved. It's devolved. It's gone back. The people of today in America are a lot lower in IQ than those back when abortion was illegal and going on back through. The worse people get, the more sinful people get, the more foolish and wicked and dumb they become. But look at verse 8, Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. And think about this with abortionists. Because they're all, all these things in verse 8, abortionists line up with every single one of them. Think about it. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Think about it. Fearful. Why are you afraid, these women? Oh, I don't want to have a child right now because I don't want to go through the pain of childbirthing. I don't want to have to go through all the hardships and everything else of raising a child. They're, they're afraid. Unbelieving. You have to be an atheist. You have to be an unbelieving fool atheist to have an abortion. You can't believe in God. You can't believe that someday you're going to be standing before God and have to give an account for the baby that you killed, murdered. So they're fearful, they're unbelieving, the abominable. I mean, there are animals that have better sense. Animals that don't abort their own baby. You know? I mean, talk, talk about an abomination. It's disgusting. Murderers. You are taking the life of someone else. It's not your body. I mean, you know, oh, it's my body, my choice. You're an idiot. Okay, there's no nice way to put it. You are an idiot. It's not your body. You know, I mean, if I come out and I have my son standing beside me and I say, this is my body. No, it's his body. Okay. Uh, that body, when did it form? When it came out of the womb? No. It didn't magically come out as something and it's a fetus, you know, until it comes out and, and then now it's a body. Now it's a child or something. That's stupid. <laughs> Murderers and whoremongers. What is a whoremonger? Somebody that's living together. You get whoremongers. I mean, there's tons of them up here, you know, that these whoremongers, I'm going to be doing a study on it eventually here. But you have people that are living together and they're fornicating, having sexual relations, and there's no commitment in terms of being married there. That's being a whoremonger. Okay, it doesn't mean some guy that just goes and solicits whores or something like that. That doesn't mean that. It means people that are living together outside of marriage, a biblical marriage, okay? And a biblical marriage is not a state marriage license, all right? 
Let's get that one through there too. Okay, it's called a spiritual marriage covenant or coverture. That's all that you see in the Bible. You never see anybody going to the state and can we please get married? Can we have a marriage license? It's not there. Put that in there. Sorcerers. You say, well, it, it can't be sorcerer. How, how could an abortion be sorcery? That doesn't even make any sense. Well, where are they going to have that abortion? They're going to the doctor, the medical establishment, Planned Parenthood, and they're taking pharmaceuticals. What are pharmaceuticals? They're a form of witchcraft. Literally, pharmakia is where they got the word pharmaceutical from. Pharmakia is translated in your King James Bible to witchcraft. <laughs> so, don't, oh, there's no sorcery there. Oh, yes, there is. Oh, yes, there is. Idolaters. They sacrifice their children to idols. I can't, uh, you know, disappoint my god, Mammon, by having this child there that would actually get in my way of my career and whatever else, so I have to kill the child. Sacrifice the child to Mammon. That's exactly why they're doing it. All liars. My body, my choice. It's just a fetus. All this other stuff. They're liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The older you get as a Christian, the more you realize that there are people that truly, the vast majority of people, their damnation is just. You know, the atheists come out and they say, if, if God's such a loving God and all this other stuff, uh, you know, why would he send people to burn, you know, to hell and burn them forever? And you have people that profess to be Christians and they somehow get this weird thing that, Hell is just sort of annihilation and there isn't any kind of eternal torment, although the Bible plainly teaches it. You know, uh, yeah. Um, false, you know, one of the best ones is Revelation chapter 19 and you go into chapter 20 and Revelation 19, the false prophet, the Antichrist, are cast into the lake of fire and a thousand years later in Revelation chapter 20, they're still there. They're still burning. So, you know, the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever and they have no rest day nor night. Anybody that takes the mark of the beast? But people just, you know, refuse to believe what is written because they're wicked. But uh, do abortionists deserve to burn forever in the lake of fire? Yes, they do. Absolutely. This world is filled with a lot of wicked people, brethren. And um, we, have, we have to have a holy hatred, a righteous indignation for the wicked people out there. And just say, you know what? Um, I have no sympathy for these people. If they reject Jesus Christ, if they reject the Word of God, the Word of God that built this nation, you know, George Washington said uh, it's impossible to rightly govern without God and the Bible. And he was talking about this book right here. Um, oh, I, I just rejected. Okay, then when your time comes, when your death and dying comes, I'm not going to feel any sympathy for that. I have enough love for people that the worst sinner, the, the vilest sinner, the, you know, the old, like the old hymn says, the vilest offender that truly believes that moment from Jesus, a pardon receives. Sure. If you're an abortion doctor and you come right to this property right here and you knock on my door and you say, I'd like to be saved. Praise the Lord. Come on in. Let me show you from the scriptures how to be saved. I wouldn't turn them away. Hey, I'm a, a woman. I had a, I've had three abortions. Um, Brother Brian, could you please tell me how to be saved? Absolutely. Praise the Lord. You're a murderer. But Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses, can cleanse you from all your sin. Cleanseth us from all sin is what the verse says in 1 John chapter 1. There's no sin that God can't wash away. Um, God will save you. But if you reject this book and you reject salvation then you deserve what's coming to you and um, God has allowed abortion uh, for a number of reasons and one of the reasons which I've said already is to judge this wicked country and then when the time comes that um, the Lord says okay I now abhor you I'm going to turn and I'm going to bring in a foreign nation they're going to come in here and they're going to do horrible things like you can't fathom. Um, let me read what happened in Berlin after the Russians came in at the end of World War II. Read how they gang raped the women. Wouldn't it be something, oh, you know, it's my body and everything else. Oh, well, we'll see about that. 
when the uh, foreign troops are coming into this country and raping women, gang raping women, and then shoot them in the head. We're doing whatever they feel like doing. Oh, wait, this is God's nation. Oh, God bless America. Oh, wait. No, uh, God's not going to protect a nation that's done so many abortions. You say, but it doesn't make sense. Why would God use China that has forced government abortions to judge a nation, another nation that has abortions? Because God can use one wicked nation to destroy another before he destroys that one. And that's exactly what's going to happen. China is a very vile, very wicked nation, but God has allowed them to be built up to a level of strength and power to judge America. And then China is going to have their day. And God's going to make a full end of that nation. So, um, I have zero tolerance for abortionists. Um, there is no middle ground. There's no, well, you know, I could say some, you know, we can talk about. No, there isn't any. And as a Bible believer, there's no justification for abortion. And if you think that there is, then you're on the wrong channel. And I really don't have anything to say to you. Um, that's just the way it is. So, um, just wanted to put this thing out there to really make a clear, definitive statement about uh, what I believe on abortion. Um, I know people have said, you know, I get compared to Ruckman a lot, um, which, you know, I'm honored by that because Ruckman was a great Bible teacher, but he was way off on the abortion thing. Um, and I don't agree with them on that. So uh, just wanted to get that out there, make that very plain, very clear. Um, so that's going to be it for this study. Uh, I have a bunch of studies I need to do outdoors yet. I said about that in, um, I think, the community post or something. Uh, I was banned from YouTube, if you didn't know that. Um, I've, I've had so many videos you know, taken down from YouTube over the years. I don't even, I mean, I've lost track. How many videos I've taken down? I, I'm probably at least 50 videos over the years. I might be getting closer to 100 videos now. I, I don't even know. I I never bothered to count it. I, I don't have time for that. But uh, I've had so many videos taken down. It's just insane. You say, well, uh, why didn't they take your channel down yet? Oh, well, because of you. Because you pray for me. And you pray that the Lord uh, keeps the doors open for me to be able to preach to people. And I thank you for that. And I'm being very serious. It's not by my own power. It's not by, oh, look at me. I'm a great guy and whatever else. And they don't dare to go against me because I can outsmart them. And I have a team of great lawyers or something. <sighs> not on your life. Um, it's the body of Christ that keeps me on here. And the power of the Lord Jesus Christ that says to the people on YouTube, yeah, you can persecute him, but... Uh, you can't take him down. And if this channel does ever get taken down, well, it's because the time has come where God has said, okay, you've done enough now. Time to go do something else. So please do keep us in your prayers. Um, you know, what more can I say? Sure wish I could get into power in this country. I could really make some changes. <laughs> uh, Brian Denlinger for uh, President um, twenty. 24. Uh, yeah, that'd be nice. Um, I don't think most people would consider me a president, though. I'd be more like a dictator. <laughs> You'd have to. I mean, I mean, seriously, you know, just, just to put this out here again, just to kind of slam the whole political system, you know, the left-right paradigm is false. I get it. I understand that. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. They're whatever. Um, in theory, I would be a, rep a Republican, but, you know, in practice, no. The Republicans are just as corrupt and bought out by Big Pharma and all the other military-industrial complex stuff. Believe me, I understand all, all of it. But, uh, I mean, what would you do if you took over this country with all the special interests and all the other things and run, pulling the strings in this country and everything else? Uh, you'd have to be a dictator. You, I mean, it would have to be just, okay, no voting on this. This is what the way it's going to be. And, uh, you know... Catholics are eventually going to get a guy that will do that very thing, but unfortunately it won't be for the betterment of people. It will be a bad situation, the Antichrist. Um, before that, there could be a Catholic leader in this country that would be like Hitler. And I, that gets me a little bit 
upset because I think, unfortunately, a lot of Christians would fall for it because the draw towards a alt-right candidate would be very strong um, because he'd probably come out and say things like, we need to get rid of sodomy and we need to stop abortion immediately, no exceptions, and it would be very hard to not fall into that way of thinking and say, I, hey, I support this guy or whatever. Um, so that's all I'm going to say about that. But uh, we have a promise in this book that there's going to come a day when we come back with Jesus Christ and we rule and reign with him for a thousand years. Um, and at that point in time, there won't be any voting. There won't be any abortion or uh, sodomites or whatever else. Um, that won't be there. Look forward to that. <laughs> um, this world is not our home, brethren. And um, just wanted to encourage people with that little statement there. Always remember eternity. Always remember the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. We have a lot to look forward to. So that is going to be it. And we'll see you in the next study. Again, as always, thank you very much for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.